Welcome back. Well, yesterday, President Bonatini signed the 2023 supplementary budget into law. Uh, let's get a sense of what to expect uh, with Dumebi Oluwole, senior analyst at uh, Financial Directives Company. Great to have you. Dumebi, good morning. Good morning, Larry. Last time you were here, it wasn't signed into law, but now yes. it's here. What are yes. you expecting? I mean, um, going into the details of the budget, what we do see is, um, if you look at the summary of the budget, um, the recurrence, recurrent expenditure is pretty lower than um, capital expenditure. But they're quite close. Very close. Yeah. Um, that's why I said pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so it's marginally lower. Um, but what we do see, from what, what is happening now, and why this budget has even come into place, you know, in the first place is, Clearly, there is need to reflect the Nigerian economy and equip consumer demand, equip consumer spending. And on the surface of things, that's exactly what this budget is supposed to do. Um, coming at a time where you know, we ha they have funds, quite, quite, quite a large sum for um, um, as, as social safety nets, conditional cash transfers to provide to um, households. Um, already, you know, there, was, there were already talks of, of that happening earlier in the year, and we already saw some moves from the government. But now it's already signed into law that there's a huge amount of money earmarked for this purpose, I think about $400 billion, um, to alleviate consumer spending. Now, this is, this is you know, um, a welcome move in terms of the fact that we know how inflation has continually eroded consumer spending over the course of the year. Inflation is, is around about 27%, approximately 27% as, as of today, and the expectations that it would continue to increase um, even uh, up until 2024, the Q1 2024. So um, this is one, one thing that we see is a good thing. Um, however, when you go deeper into the budget, there are lots of things that have raised a lot of concerns in terms of the priority um, spending for the federal government, especially when it comes to consumers, and then how they are beginning, how they are anchoring business and investment expectations and sentiments. Because right now, the economy is in a very fragile state. We're, we've We've started, we're on the path of reforms, and these reforms are extremely painful, not only to consumers, but also to businesses. And as such, both fiscal and monetary policy, there has to be a very good, um, there, there has to be that harnessing between um, fiscal and monetary policy to ensure that I, if, if we're tightening monetary policy, we should see some level of um, tightening as well in um, in fiscal not, expenditure, um, tightening in one not tightening place and one place, in exactly. Because what that does is it distorts the um, transmission effect of both um, um, a contractionary monetary policy and fiscal policy to the economy. Um, if we're going expansionary, we should see as well um, an expansionary monetary policy, and that's exactly what we saw. Um, years before now where we had very low interest rates and we saw um, the government as well also spending a lot more in advanced economies. Bringing it here, what, I'm, what the point is this, the, the details of the budget, um, they're not properly anchoring business and investment sentiments. And this is because we see things like um, the government is trying, we're trying, they're trying to buy more SUVs, we're trying to rehabilitate um, um, certain quarters and stuff, not because that is not needed. But the point is, during reforms, we need to reprioritize our expenditure, expenditure to capture what truly needs to be done and what really needs to be done. We have a lot of roads that need to be rehabilitated. The agricultural supply chain is still distorted, not because funds were not earmarked for this, but when you look at this of the budget, you do see that there is still that gap. We're, we're still focusing more on recurrent expenditures, and even the recurrent expenditures, when you, when you splice that, you realize that the recurrent expenditures that we're even you know, putting a lot of money in still do not have a strong, posit pos strong positive multiplier effect on the economy. So what you see is we're spending money, but with the, the returns we should be getting in terms of... Um, um, uh, in terms of how well it, number one, continues to encourage, in terms of how it encourages business, right. you know, business um, opportunities, um, how it eases, you know, um, doing business, and how it does encourage consumer spending, it's still lacking in all of that. So we see this very ambitious budget with all of these road projects um, out outlined, but yet there's still a lot of gap um, um, in terms of how the government is prioritizing its expenditure as of today. If this was happening at a time where if the detail of the budget you know, was, that, was exactly this, and we, were, we didn't have painful reforms you know, going on, businesses aren't suffering, the Naira isn't suffering, then it was, it, it's pretty easy to overlook. Um, but 
we're in a very critical state and the government does need to, we need fiscal expenditure and to go in the right direction. I'm looking at, you know, this um, supplementary budget now. What is it, um, what's the forward guidance for 2024, mm -hmm. you know, with this kind of budget we're seeing now? What are we seeing yeah. for 2024? I mean, the MTF is out and we're also seeing something similar. Um, so the truth is, um, we, we're seeing quite a divergence between the President Tinubu administration in, term, in terms of budgeting and um, the Buhari administration. Truth be told, and we need to actually give accolades where accolades are due, um, the government is actually prioritizing capital expenditure. There is no doubt about that. But what we're saying is a lot more still needs to be done, right? Um, Nigeria's, Nigeria's economy is... Uh, consumption accounts over seven accounts for over seventy percent of Nigeria's econ, uh, Nigeria's GDP. Right. So what this means is a reduction in consumption expenditure will reduce Nigeria's GDP by about zero, by about seventy percent. And we and aside from that, you know, when we look at the full picture for national income accounting, there is the investment aspect as well. There's a the government expenditure aspect as well. For the investment as well, we've seen investment inflows significantly decline. And to reflect that, we need to properly anchor investment um, expectations. We properly we need to anchor that we need to anchor investment sentiments and their expectations to, to bring in the money that we need to reflect the Nigerian economy. And ways to ways to do that are number one, through our monetary policy consolidation. We're seeing a lot of issues when it comes to the CBN's credibility and that continues to send negative shockwaves to investments, to investors as well. We've seen FPIs pull out funds um, you know from the NGX sharply and it is definitely having a negative negative impact on the economy. Although we're seeing some form of um, b movement back to orthodox liquidity management by the, C by the, by the CBN, which is good. But the, like, I, like I said, in terms of transparency, I think I mentioned this on Tuesday, in terms of monetary policy transparency, how the CBN is actually you know, clearing its backlog and stuff like that, those are the things that will continue to anchor investment sentiments and then con bring, the, bring this money in. On the fiscal side, we need to see more prudent expenditure. And if, if, if the government is going to be expansionary in their, in their expenditure, it has to be on proper uh, on capital expenditure that will have long-term effects to bring in, this, bring in the funds. An example would be if we're going to have um, road, um, road uh, um, infrastructure, road projects going on. A particular road project should not be the same amount as the SUV that you're budgeting for. What that, what that tells an investor is, okay, you're, you, you're def, while this you know, is quite good and nice, what, what that tells me is you're prioritizing looking good over bringing these roads in. But or budgets, this road. budgets tell a deep story. They, they do tell a very deep story. And especially when you categorize um, um, providing SUVs and stuff like rehabilitating certain quarters, you cap especially when you categorize that as capital expenditure, that signals to an investor a very negative thing because why are you categorizing that under capital expenditure when we all, do, when we all know that this is more of a recurrent expenditure? Yes, it is an asset, but what it will be used for, and all yes, but what, we, what, what it will be used for is more of a recurrent thing rather than a long term, ex, ex, long term, um, la, rather than having a long term impact on and the And we would economy. have seen a positive there if mm -hmm. maybe those cars were coming from, were made in Nigeria cars. Okay. I mean, that would have, well, you know, <laughs> brought some kind of sucker. Again, again, um, this is where transparency also comes in in terms of fiscal fiscal policy as well. Um, whenever a budget is done this way, I know um, advanced economies do this, and even some African countries like Kenya as well, they do this. Um, there has to be that forum where every detail in the budget is explained to the public, explained to various stakeholders, simply because it does provide, a, it sheds light on where questions and concerns come up, right? And you're able to just douse whatever, um, negative sentiments that could, could brew up from that, from that regard. Regardless, as I mentioned, transparency is extremely key. And this is, you know, going back to what I was talking about in terms of national income accounting, this is the investment bit. Um, to bring in these investors, we have to properly anchor investor expectations. The next part of it is government spending. And this is where um, even the World Bank has said, actually, the Nigeria, Nigerian government or Nigeria as a whole, we do not spend, uh, uh, um, government spending is one of the lowest 
globally. And what they meant by that, or government spending per head, is one of the lowest globally. And what they meant by that is not because the government doesn't spend a lot. It's because they're not spending on the things that would properly that will trickle down into a um, real GDP per capita. That means that when the government spends on a particular thing, it should have a positive effect in the pocket of every Nigerian. So, and what this means, if you're spending on a particular road, business, it, it should be, so this is it. It has to be properly targeted, right? If you're spending on a road that is not widely used, there's no productivity that will come from that, right? Because businesses don't, businesses and don't so that a lot of people don't to the farms, leads to the farms or? Or, exactly. So it has to be properly targeted, and, and um, 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 it, you have to ensure that it has that positive multiplier effect to aid businesses, encourage output, and again um, boost consumer. So in a sense, it's not spending. like we're not spending a lot, but yes. it's just where, where, where we're spending we're spending. It exactly. Quite incredible. Thank you so much. Always great having your perspective. Thank uh, you. Do maybe a little less, you know, analyst, financial directors. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.